Hello everyone. My name is Soran Haldar and I'm an applications engineer for Hawkridge Systems. And in today's video, we'll be looking at how to use your PCB electronic design file with SolidWorks Electrical. So let's go ahead and insert a printed circuit board. Now there are two ways you can do it. You can create a new PCB from your manufacturer part library or you can create one using your electronic design file, which is what we'll be doing. So let's go ahead and browse for one. And once you have found your IDF, which by the way is sort of an intermediate file format that allows for information exchange between your ECAD and MCAD. So once you have selected your IDF file, you have the option of copying it into your application folder so that it's available for other users as well. This is not really a concern for me, so we'll go ahead and uh, select do not copy. And once that's done, we can go ahead and define the manufacturer part properties of the PCB component. Now there's nothing here that I really need to change, so let's jump into the next step where we define the component properties. And the only thing I would like to change here is the component root, which needs to be PCB. Now I've been working in a mixed scheme and as such I'm allowed to insert my PCB component either as a schematic symbol or as a line diagram symbol. In this case we'll go ahead and choose the schematic symbol which works uh, pretty similar to the black box. So all I need to do is draw a box and that will denote my PCB component. So what I've done here is uh, I've taken an external idea file that was created using a third party software and I've created a PCB component using it and then inserted its symbol into my schematic. So now let's take a look at how SolidWorks Electrical 3D handles this information. Now I already have the uh, project assembly open and uh, here's my enclosure where I mean to insert my PCB and then check for fit and interference. If I already had a 3D model for my PCB, all I would need to do is uh, find the PCB from my list of components and then insert from file. However, I don't really have a model for this. What I do have is the IDF file that was uh, used to create the PCB component. And the IDF file does have the XYZ information for all the components on the board itself. So I can go ahead and use CircuitWorks to build a model. So in the background, CircuitWorks is reading all the information from the IDF file and generating a model that I can then go ahead and insert into my assembly. And once that is done, I can go ahead and add a coincident made between the uh, bottom of the board and the base of the enclosure. And I can also go ahead and add some more mates to position this better. I'm just going to drag it and eyeball it to make sure that it is the right size. Now I can clearly see that yes it does fit into my enclosure but I should probably go with a smaller board. Now normally what you would do now is uh, you would go ahead and use the third party software to edit the IDF file and change the size of the board. Now I don't really have access to an IDF file so I'm going to just go ahead and delete this model and uh, we'll go ahead and replace the, ID the original IDF file with a different IDF file that has the resized board information. So we're basically copying and pasting over the original. There you go. And all I need to do now is to update the model using CircuitWorks. And uh, we're going to, yes, we're going to go ahead and replace the originally created part and now my circuit works is reading this new idea file to generate a new model. And once that's done, we can see that uh, the new model looks different from the older one. So it has updated the information as per the new IDF. And we'll go ahead and close our assembly and not save anything. Also, when the original model was created, it was saved into the program data for the project. So we need to go ahead and save this new model and overwrite the previous one. And this takes me into the program data for the right project. And all I need to do is uh, save over the original part file that was created. And let's close out of this as well. Now let's test that it, that actually worked. So we'll go ahead and open the project assembly again and try to insert the PCB model and see if that brings in the new part. 
So let's find the PCB from my list of components and insert. And you can see that it inserts the new model, not the old one. So that's pretty much it for my video. Just to recap, we used an idea file that was created using a different program to create a component in SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic. And then on the 3D side of things, we used the same idea file and piggybacked on CircuitWorks to, create, to generate a 3D model that we could then incorporate into our assembly to check for fit and interference. Not only that, we also showed that there is a link between the model and the IDF file. So if you were to go ahead and modify the IDF file, uh, you can also update the model to reflect those changes. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you guys found it useful. And uh, do not forget to check out our YouTube channel for more SOLIDWORKS electrical videos and even other SOLIDWORKS products videos. Thanks again, and have a great day. Goodbye.